My name is Thorsten Norgaard. I'm a Danish photographer. I travel the world taking photographs and teaching photography. Today I will talk about shutter speed and what is the shutter. All cameras have a shutter release. This is the name of this fellow and when you press it, you can hear the shutter. Sometimes in a DSLR you can also hear the mirror. So here is where the shutter is. The shutter is simply this curtain in here. Here's a metal curtain. And when you press the shutter release, the curtain goes up. And what it does is that it simply allows the sensor or the film to receive the light that comes through the lens. For in this case, it was 1 25th of a second. It could also be as slow as, let's do here two seconds so you can actually see the sensor now. There you have the sensor. There's a straight view to it. The shutter is one of the fundamental principles of a camera and is the main control of getting the right exposure on a camera. And that's basically the whole point of a camera, that you keep the film or the sensor in dark and then you control how much light it gets. So the shutter release is the main control. In the old days, a shutter was that you would have the photographer he had this big wooden camera and he would hold a hand in front of the lens and then he would tell everybody, okay, now everybody stand still and smile for 20 seconds. And he did like this for 20 seconds and then he put it back on so it was dark in there. So that's the principle of the shutter. It's not a technology that has changed a lot. Now we have metal curtains that fold up so they fill less. A few years ago we had uh, curtains that rolled this way. Uh, same thing is simply this, this principle. You put your hand here or you make it dark and now you expose the film on the sensor and then you close it down again. That's what the shutter does. The shutter is controlled from up here on older cameras and on Leicas. On many new cameras the shutter speed is hidden inside the menu and the camera basically takes over what should the shutter speed be. I like to have cameras where I can control it so I can set it manually here and say I want 1 25th of shutter speed. That has something to do that generally my ISO is set to one ISO, my aperture is set to one certain aperture. So the only thing that changes in the correct exposure is the shutter time and that's why I want to control that one. And you can also say the shutter time is the control of light that affects the picture the least because if you shoot a portrait at 1 4,000th of a second or 1 25th of a second, it doesn't make it look different. Uh, some of the other controls change the look of the picture. So that's why it is the main control. There's different shutter speeds that are good for different things. If you photograph people in the street, 1 25th of a second is usually enough that you can freeze the person. If you go lower than that, like 1 60th of a second, 1 30th, you'll get motion blur, so that's basically, it looks like that the picture is out of focus, but it's not out of focus, it's just the person is moving while the shutter is up, and then you get movement in the picture. If you have people who walk fast, or cars driving in the street, in a normal city, not that fast, the shutter speed is 2 50th of a second to freeze them. If you do sports events and so on, and you want to freeze a runner, you have to be at 1 1,000th or 1 2,000th of a second. Interesting enough, race cars like Formula One is not shot at 1 4,000th of a second. They're usually shot with long tail lenses that are slow, they need a lot of light. And then the picture is taken at 1 60th of a second. So the way you do it is you focus on the car and you follow it. And then at one point you take the picture. And as you follow the car, that's why you see the final picture, that the car is sharp but the background is moving. So that's how you get that. If you shot it at 1 4,000th of a second, the background and the car would be frozen and that's not the look you want. Not that many of us do sport car, but it's just an interesting little detail. This thing is referred to as the shutter release, but now as time moves forward and we get new cameras, we actually get cameras without a shutter. You heard about mirrorless cameras, that's where you remove the mirror. Now we also remove the shutter. So you have Modern cameras like this, like a Q, and maybe the next, like an M, where you have an electronic shutter. So that means there's no shutter curtain in this one. The isolation of the sensor happens digitally instead. So you don't need this piece of metal. That also means 
then when you use a camera like this, it's completely soundless because there's no shutter. So the only little small click you hear if you heard that is the aperture inside that changes. This camera offers a mechanical shutter up to one two thousand of a second and then up to sixteen and a half thousand second it goes digital uh, shutter. So you could say this one maybe should be renamed from shutter release to just release because there isn't going to be any shutter in the future. So all a camera is about is to keep the sensor or the film in darkness in here and then make sure it's only exposed to light for a certain amount of time and a certain amount of light so it looks right and that means that it looks like what you're looking at. That's the whole art or technique of a camera and that's basically how simple it is. I stay mainly with the shutter time and what you have is, if you ever heard about uh, the exposure triangle, that is how big a hole is through the lens, the shutter time and then the speed of the sensor or the ISO. Those are the three things that you use to create the correct exposure. The tradition in photography has always been that when you change the shutter speed from one four thousand of a second, you go one stop, that's one two thousand of a second, so now you double the light. And to change this one and maintain the exposure and then change the aperture, when you go one stop on the aperture, you also reduce light to half or you double the light. So all the controls, even the ISO setting, traditionally is that you reduce light to half or you double it. So that means you have those three factors, so you could have one certain exposure, but you want to have more sharpness, so you increase the aperture here, and then you extend the time that the shutter is up, and that's how you get the same exact exposure, but with different settings. Watch out for my other videos on ISO and aperture, because that is the triangle of exposure, how to get the correct exposure. That was my talk on shutter speed and shutter curtain. If you want to get into more details on this subject, you can go to my website, there's a link down here, and you can buy my ebook, The Freedom of Photographic Expression. And if you want to get in deeper to it, you can sign up for my new OverGuard extension course, where you really go in depth with it. While you're on my website, Sign up for my newsletter. If you're really smart, you go sign up right now and you get a free ebook. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. See you next time.